Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19. Joining me once again is interpreter Margie Prop, and thank you so much, Margie, for providing your services to make this briefing more accessible to all. We encourage everyone to visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, where you will find a dashboard with the latest COVID-19 data. We update that dashboard at about 3 p.m. each day, and you will also find there our COVID-19 risk dial, a color-coded tool that gives our residents uh, an understanding of the risk level here in Lincoln and Lancaster County. We update that dial every Friday, and last week we went backwards for the first time, moving from the moderate yellow range back into the orange range, indicating a high level of spread of COVID-19 risk. This week, we will remain in the orange, and we need everyone to understand that the risk of contact, contracting COVID-19 in our community continues to be high. As we see our progress over the last few weeks begin to erode, it is up to all of us in Lincoln to come together to protect one another from this virus and to do so with renewed urgency. Now is the time to stay home if you do not feel well to minimize trips outside the home, reserving them as much as possible for when you have to go to work, get groceries, medicine, or exercise, to wear a mask every time you are outside the home, around other people in public places, to watch your distance and stay at least six feet away from others at all times, and to wash your hands with soap and water frequently. We stress the importance of these precautions today as our community mourns the loss of another resident to COVID-19. The 14th death in our community is a woman in her 70s who was hospitalized. Our hearts go out to her family and friends. Today in Lincoln, an additional 50 people have tested positive for COVID-19. The total number of lab-confirmed cases in Lincoln now and Lancaster County now stands at 2,363. On a more positive note, our total recoveries identified today are up from 785 to 817. Scott Holmes is here from our health department today. Scott is the manager of the Environmental uh, Public Health Division and will update us on our indicators and the COVID-19 risk dial for our community. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon. As the mayor said, the risk dial remains in the orange range, indicating a high risk of COVID-19 spread in our community. Here again are the main factors that we consider in determining the position of the dial. First, we look at the number of COVID-19 cases and at the trend. When averaged over a seven-day period, the trend is going up. Seven-day rolling average has increased from 15 on June 23rd to 35 on July 13th. Um, this is a disturbing trend. We now have over double the number of average cases per day than we did in late June. We also see the trend continue with the number of new cases. From Sunday, July 5th through Saturday, July 11th, we had 228 cases reported. From Sunday, July 12th through today, we have already seen 274 new cases. Uh, we remain uh, especially concerned that the young people who are testing positive will continue to spread the virus in the broader segment of the population. Individuals in the 20 to 29 year old age group make up about 18 and percent of our population. But from June 28th through July 16th, 54% of the new cases have been in that age group. Um, with the 274 cases at this point this week, uh, we believe that with additional cases coming in later today and then tomorrow, that we will actually exceed the highest number of cases in a week that we have had the entire time we've had COVID in our community. A second key indicator is positivity rate, the percent of tests that are positive. After remaining below 6%, for several weeks and being as low as 3.1% the week ending June 27th, the weekly positivity rate increased to over 7% the last two weeks. This is a significant increase in the percent of people being tested that are positive for COVID-19. A second indicator, or a third indicator that we use, 
is our testing capacity and availability and the turnaround time on those results. Since the beginning of this pandemic, 35,578 individuals have been tested for COVID-19 in Lancaster County. After six weeks of consistent testing numbers with an average of about 2,500 tests per week, we did see an increase to just over 3,000 tests completed the past week ending July 11th. Uh, this week so far, we have 3,100 tests completed and we expect again that we may say our record for uh, the number of tests being conducted. With additional test results still expected to come in today and tomorrow, um, we will probably see, as I said, an increase in our total number of cases that will exceed anything we've had in the past. Clearly, we are seeing uh, people seek more testing. Uh, we had some reports that some people were having to wait a few days to get tested, but we worked with Bryan Health, CHI, and Test Nebraska, and they've added additional slots for testing by appointment. When we look at the first three indicators, increases in new cases, the positivity rate, and testing, it tells us that community spread is becoming more established in our community. Brian Health and CHI St. Elizabeth both have capacity to do more testing at their drive through testing sites. To get started, you can fill out a free online risk assessment at chi.health.com, or chihealth.com, excuse me, or brianhealth.com. Uh, in addition, Brian Health is no longer requiring that there be a physician involved. Next week, Test Nebraska will expand its testing to in Lincoln to six days a week, Monday through Saturday. They'll run from eight to noon and one to six. This testing is open to everyone, even those that do not have symptoms. Just go to testnebraska.com. Remember, you must have an appointment at all three locations at all three testing sites. Last week, we reported that there were significant delays in getting laboratory reports due to the huge number of tests around the country going to private labs. Fortunately, the turnaround time is now back to an average of about two to three days. This helps ensure that we can contact those who are positive, quickly, and ident quickly identifying anyone that may have con been in contact with to help prevent the spread in our community. A fourth indicator is the capacity of the Health Department to conduct investigations and contact tracing. The Health Department has 34 contact tracers available to conduct case investigations. With a full case load, we should be able to handle about 120 new cases in 24-hour period. This capacity is sufficient at this time and is kept paced with demand. Nursing staff initiate contact tracing with all positive cases within 24 to 36 hours of receiving the lab result. All the information they receive is confidential. Um, we want to emphasize that it's really important if you receive a call from a health department nurse that you accept the call and that you provide complete information to them. The nurses provide health consultation to those who have been exposed and it helps us contain the spread of the virus to other people in our community. Health department staff are thankful for the assistance that we have get uh, received from the community overall in doing contact tracing. Fifth major indicator we consider is the capacity of our hospitals and our entire health care system. Since July 3rd, we have seen an increase from nine COVID patients hospitalized to 22 COVID-19 patients hospitalized today. That includes 14 Lancaster County residents and eight from other communities. With an increase in the number of overall cases, we expect to see an increase in the number of patients needing hospitalization in two to three weeks. This is what other communities have experienced around the country. Again, we, be, we continue to be very concerned about young adults going to bars, parties, and hanging out in large groups without wearing face coverings. This impacts the whole community because the vast majority of these young people work in food service and healthcare industries, creating additional concerns for community spread. Please be a hero, wear a mask. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Scott. As our health indicators demonstrate, we are in a very serious situation. Our public health emergency is not over, and our numbers, many of them are moving in the wrong direction. Everyone needs to understand that this reversal of progress threatens the opening of school. 
It threatens the businesses that have reopened, and it threatens the health of every person in our community. To understand what's at stake, you only have to turn on the news and see what's happening all across the country. No one wants Lincoln to become the next Miami, Houston, or Phoenix. We have to re respect a virus that spreads exponentially. We must come together as a community to protect one another before things in Lincoln get as bad as they are in Miami, Houston, or Phoenix. This virus doesn't play favorites. There is no Lincoln exception in this virus's DNA. This virus is coming for us too. And the question we face is whether or not we are willing to rise to the challenge. Our fate is up to us and the time to act is now. The time to act is now because it does not make sense to wait until we see our hospitals overflowing with sick and dying people. By the time hospital capacity is maxed out, it's very, very hard to stop a virus. What makes Lincoln different from Miami, Houston, and Phoenix, and other parts of the country where the virus is surging, is that we have a head start. We have a head start that they no longer have on managing this virus and preventing that level of illness and death. And we have the advantage of learning lessons from what has happened in their cities. We also have the advantage that our community cares so much. We have seen far and wide that the people of Lincoln and Lancaster County care about one another and want to protect one another. The science on COVID-19 tells us that the, one of the most effective ways we can demonstrate our care for one another and protect each other is to wear masks. There is enormous evidence that wearing masks prevents the spread of droplets and aerosols that transmit COVID-19. The World Health Organization, the President's Coronavirus Task Force, and the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, acknowledge this and assert that masks are key to getting this virus under control. According to experts at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, there is also emerging evidence that when people wear masks, they get less sick because they get infected with fewer virus particles. We also know that just as with seat belts in vehicles or smoking indoors or wearing shoes and shirts in restaurants, more people will comply and wear masks when they are required to do so. I firmly believe that based on the scientific evidence and the severity of the public health emergency that we face, we must take additional action now to stem the spread of the virus in Lincoln and Lancaster County. And I am not alone. I have heard from our Lancaster County Medical Society physicians who sent this letter, who believe our community and our local conditions will benefit if we require wearing masks. The Lincoln City Council, the Lancaster County Board and I have heard from businesses, educators, community members who are disproportionately being impacted by the virus and many, many other residents. Some of the people who you will hear from today that masks are critical to keeping their businesses open and hastening our economic recovery, to getting children and teachers back in the classrooms, and to preventing unnecessary suffering and death. This is why today we are announcing a new Lincoln-Lancaster County Directed Health Measure, or DHM, that will require all individuals to wear a mask when they visit an indoor facility that is open to the public. This new requirement means that any individual or entity which maintains premises open to the public, to the general public, must require all individuals ages five and older to wear a mask while indoors, unless six feet of separation at all times can be achieved. There are important exceptions, and those exceptions include individuals seated at a bar or restaurant to eat or drink or while immediately consuming food or beverages, during exercise, persons engaged in an occupation preventing the wearing of a face covering, anyone obtaining a service or purchasing goods or services that require the temporary removal of a face covering, a person providing a speech, lecture, or broadcast to an audience so long as six feet of distancing from each other, can, from other individuals is maintained, individuals that cannot otherwise wear a face covering because of a medical condition, a mental health condition, or a disability that prevents the wearing of a face covering, and anyone seeking state or county government services. This DHM is in effect beginning Monday, July 20th, and continues until August 31st, at which point we'll reevaluate our community's status. No other changes to the DHM issued on June 22nd are being implemented at this time. 
And while no other changes are being implemented at this time, we do want people to understand that the severity of our situation in Lincoln and Lancaster County did prompt our health team to consider further restrictions as they evaluated these, this next step. They considered reducing restaurant, restaurant occupancy limits. But right now, the case investigation data does not point to a correlation between our numbers and restaurants. They considered reducing capacity or closing bars because there is a correlation between our cases and young people who are going to bars. But instead, this week, the health team hand delivered a letter to every bar clarifying the DHM requirements and collaborating with them to quickly achieve compliance. They also considered reducing the number of people who may gather together. But right now, they are not as concerned about that number as long as everyone is wearing masks. In short, it is our hope that this one new action of requiring masks will prevent us from having to pursue any of these further restrictions. On the question of enforcement of this new measure, we plan to emphasize public education and support. Our health team will have face coverings available for businesses that need them to help the public comply and do their part to protect one another from this virus. We're also thankful to CHI Health, which is holding a free mask giveaway tomorrow from 9 to 11 a.m. at the CHI Health Nebraska Heart Campus at 7500 South 91st Street. As Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson said in announcing his state's mask mandate, quote, our children and grandchildren will be going back to school this year, and they will be required in most instances to wear face coverings. And if you think about it, if you're going to ask the children in the school setting to wear face coverings for everyone's health and safety, then the adults must help them to get ready and set the right example for them. Leaders across our community are setting this good example locally, and a number of them are here today to discuss why they believe the mask in public requirement is critical to our success. First, I want to welcome our interim health director, Pat Lopez, who is joining our press briefing by Zoom today. Pat, over to you. Thank you, Mayor. As shared in the update, we have seen the risk of COVID-19 in our community increase in the last few weeks. We see that in the higher case numbers and higher positivity rates. We see the increase in cases in the under 40 age group, and we know that young people who are ignoring the health recommendations are driving the increase in community spread. Throughout this pandemic, we have had difficult conversations with all sectors of our community. We have had to make difficult decisions. In making those decisions, we have used accurate and up-to-date local health data, and we have learned from the experiences of other communities consulted national experts, and followed guidance from CDC. We have partnered with our medical community and health systems in the decision-making process as well. We have been clear, consistent, and comprehensive in providing guidance and recommendations to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Lincoln and Lancaster County. We have worked with local government agencies, education, businesses, child cares, long-term care facilities, the faith community, nonprofits, and cultural centers. It has been very rewarding to work with our community partners and to have our interactions be constructive and action-oriented. The fact is that mask wearing is one of the most powerful tools we have to slow and stop the spread of the virus. It is a reasonable present preventative measure. We believe that the residents of Lincoln and Lancaster County wearing face coverings will do more to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community than more restrictive measures alone. The health department's medical consultant, Dr. Rademacher, recommends wide use of face coverings in the community. And this has been supported as the mayor said widely by the Lancaster County medical community. Our current situation is clear. If these data trends continue, it is likely the risk dial will continue to move toward the red, the severe risk level. This is exactly what we want to prevent and we need the help of every person in our community. For, for the most part, 
always people in Lincoln want to do the right thing. We all need to continue to support each other at this pivotal moment. If Lincoln is going to succeed and minimize the spread of COVID-19, we need to pull together and take personal responsibility for doing all we can to protect not only ourselves, but our loved ones and our community. We need to get our students back to school and we need to continue the economic recovery of Lincoln and Lancaster County. Thank you, Director Lopez. Uh, this time I'd like to invite Dr. George Hansen, pres president of the Lancaster County Medical Society to speak. First, I would like to thank the mayor for the opportunity to, to be here today and uh, to thank all of you for being here as well. We find ourselves as a community in the midst of uh, some things that I don't think any of us have ever seen before. I've been a physician for 32 years, a family physician in this town for 23 years, and I don't think I've run up against anything as difficult as we've seen ourselves in the last four months, as divisive as, as what we've been in the middle of. Um, just to, to reassure you, since I'm a storyteller, my wife, uh, you know, every good man needs a better woman beside him. She said, keep it short and keep it simple. Um, I would like to just say, you know, wear a mask. Um, I can say that I was the author of the letter that the mayor received, but that letter reflects the opinion of, of the majority of the 600 plus physicians in Lincoln that I represent. Um, I can say, you know, I think about six weeks ago, I spoke with uh, somebody on KFOR, and I'm blanking on Dale's last name. I think it's Dale Johnson, if I recall properly. And he asked me at the time what I felt was the biggest concern that I had going forward. I think he expected me to say the number of sick people, the number of ill people, but it really, what comes to mind is misinformation. <laughs> I think all of us have seen uh, the great variety of information that's available on the internet, that's uh, available on the news, that our newspapers every day. Um, the fact is, though, that the CDC, the World Health Organization, every health care organization that matters supports the use of mask wear. Okay? Masks make a difference. If you, if you doubt that, I would ask you to look at the data, especially with respect to Japan, with Germany, some of the other countries who have, have really had better <coughs> outcomes than we have. Um, at this point, I think we as a community in Lincoln are making the right decision. Uh, the physicians broadly encourage this. Um, you know, I'd like to make one other point. This is not an issue uh, that needs to divide us. Every culture, every society, every neighborhood, every group of people has a belief that the other person matters, okay? Uh, the golden rule. This is one of those opportunities for us to understand that the mask that I wear is not to protect me only, it's mostly to protect you. I think that message has not been sold enough. Uh, we need to spread that message as individuals, as leaders in this community. We need to wear masks wherever we are not able to socially distance by six feet. We need to follow the rules that are established by the mayor and her task force. Um, as physicians, I think we will continue to, to back up those rules, to do the best we can to take great care of those patients and those people who do get ill. But we want to see a lot fewer of them than we're going to see if we don't wear masks. So I would encourage you as a final closing moment to, uh, to wear a mask. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. And next, I'd like to invite Steve Joel, Superintendent of Lincoln Public Schools, to speak. Thank you, uh, Mayor, very much for this opportunity. And um, as many know, next Tuesday, we'll be unveiling our plans for the reopening of school for 42,000 students and more than 7,000 staff. And we're very excited about that. One of the debates that we've been having and the decision that we made uh, in conjunction with the excellent guidance and advice and help of Scott Holmes and Pat Lorenz and the health department was that the only way we could have school is if we wore masks. And so it was our intent to unveil on Tuesday, reaffirm the fact that in, within Lincoln Public Schools, if you're going to attend school, if you're going to be employed by school, you will wear a mask. And I believe that this DHM is going to support that in a, in a very, very large way. 
And we're, uh, thank you for that because I do uh, think that every one of us has a personal responsibility to fight this virus. And the way to do that is to, by wearing a mask and by social distancing and other health measures. Um, I, I'd like to just take a second to, to say that next Tuesday will be a big day because we've put a lot of thought into a plan. Again, we've worked with the city, we've worked with the health department, we have what we think is going to be an excellent plan. And that 100% um, of our students will have access to school, whether that's school remotely or school on site. And we're, uh, we're very excited to do that. We know that our community expects our students to be in school, and we know that our students want to be in school, and our community needs us to be in school. With a little bit less than a month to go, I believe, personally, the timing of this DHM is excellent because we have a chance now in the next 30 days to mitigate the spread of this risk, see if we can lower that risk dial, and then we can start school in an even safer position than what it is. So thank you very much for your leadership, Mayor, and thank you to all that have participated in uh, reaching this conclusion. I think personally and professionally and on behalf of close to 50,000 people, we're going in the right direction with this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Joel. And next I'd like to invite John Schwartz, the superintendent of Norris Public Schools, to join us. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for having us today. Um, I'm here as a, a representative of our school district, but also as a, a larger uh, body of schools that have been planning together ever since the spring uh, to promote a safe uh, return to our school district. We've planned with Lincoln Public Schools and Dr. Joel and his team, members of Educational Service Unit 6 and, and other schools uh, with which we're associated. Uh, we are also prepared uh, this coming week to communicate with our community what our plans are for the coming school year. We've uh, we've been uh, working uh, tirelessly uh, with our community, with Lincoln Lancaster County Health, Dr. Lopez, or Director Lopez, and members of her team, um, and fellow schools to try and identify what are the things that we should be doing in order to create an opportunity for our students to return to school on campus and concurrently keep people safe in doing so. And um, we have built our plan around the community risk assessment dial. and. What we're prepared to communicate to the Norris community, uh, like many other districts, is that we believe face coverings are a strategy that will allow us to have students in school on a more stable basis um, and with greater consistency than at times when if we're not wearing them. Um, so we are in full support of the DHM mayor and Director Lopez, and we appreciate your leadership on the matter. It's consistent with what we found in our process. There are a number of things that, that we can do as we prepare to start schools um, as a district to make sure that our students and staff return and they're safe. Um, and there are a number of things that are outside of our control. One of those things is the risk assessment dial. That's going to be driven by individual and collective decisions that we all make as a broader Lancaster County community. And like others, I would call on everyone to make responsible choices over these next several weeks getting our students back to school safely and making it safe for our staff and their families and everyone for us to return and deliver these critical services has never been more important given the context of the last several months. And so I would call on all of you to do the right thing, to follow the guidance of our public health experts and to do all we can to influence this forecast moving forward because opening our schools um, at yellow of that risk dial is a fundamentally different situation for teaching and learning and for safety than if the trajectory we're on continues. So thank you again for all those that are willing to lead through this time, and uh, we are in full support of the DHM moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. And next, I'd like to invite Tom Randa to speak. He is the executive director of the Good Neighbor Community Center and a proud member of our Lincoln Lancaster County Board of Health. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I will speak uh, on how this situation has affected uh, the Good Neighbor Community Center. Uh, starting in March, we had to close our doors and figure out how to provide services uh, to those in the community that need our help. And uh, we have uh, several uh, volunteers, and we had to start by telling them uh, they can't come 
to help us out. And we had to figure out how we were going to do it by ourselves. So there's a total of five uh, staff members right now at the Good Neighbor Community Center that are providing, have been providing services uh, since mid-March. And it's because of this uh, disease that uh, we are not able to have our volunteers uh, to help us uh, with the activities that we get to do. So our mission at the Good Neighbor Center is uh, welcoming uh, neighbors and uh, supporting stability. So uh, there's those challenges. We can't welcome our neighbors anymore into our building, so we had to figure out how are we going to pro keep providing these services? So we adapted a new way uh, by providing a drive-through uh, food distribution, uh, which is what we've been doing uh, throughout the week. But uh, you can imagine when the food, uh, food bank uh, brings its truck and we have to unload all that food. So every Monday, every Wednesday, over 5,000 pounds of food that the five of us have to lift, sort it out, put in uh, people's vehicles, it's taking a toll on us. We miss our volunteers. We want to be able to have our volunteers back. We are also thinking about um, all the students that are taking uh, classes in our facility. They can't do that anymore because uh, we can't have them in there. And we're also thinking about the community that kept bringing their clothes to us so we can uh, distribute that uh, to those who are in need. We are unable to do that. They keep calling us and asking us, when can we bring our clothes? Because we are getting a little bit big and you know, we need to change our wardrobes. So, <laughs> so the challenge has been telling them we need to wait a little bit longer. Uh, we don't know when we are going to open our doors again to uh, take in donations so that we can give those out uh, to the community. So I'm assuming this is happening across our nonprofits as well. They are missing their volunteers. Some of them can't even open their doors because uh, they are unable to do that at this point and they're providing their services over the phone and stuff like that. And uh, before I sit down, my last challenge was taking my two kids. We had to split between myself and my wife on days when we were going to homeschool. You know, the kids are at home. Uh, how are we going to do this? So I had my kids two days, and she had uh, them three days. She teaches at Union College. So between work, we had to figure out how we're going to cover the syllabus and make sure that our kids are ready for the next grades. I don't know if I'm ready to do that again for another year. It is really tough. So help us out. Wear your mask so that we can uh, be able to help those who are in need in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And next, I'd like to invite Romeo Guerra, the Executive Director of El Centro de las Americas, to speak. He is joining us via Zoom. Romeo, over to you. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to talk to the community at large and particularly to the Latino community. Uh, I'd just like to reinforce many of the things that have already been mentioned and also that we are experiencing many of the things that the Good Neighbor uh, Community Center is also experiencing. We've been doing a lot of our services via remotely and I want to announce that um, we were funded pretty significantly from the uh, Lincoln Community Foundation to provide assistance to uh, the Latino community uh, that has been affected by the COVID directly or indirectly. We've been helping them with housing, utilities, and food, and it's been a big uh, help with the community, and they are very grateful to that. I would also like to mention that uh, this is a very public health issue, and it affects all of us. It impacts all of us, and as you mentioned earlier, it, it, is, it doesn't seek out a certain group of folks. It, it involves all of us. And I think we all have to play a part in this to get things back to somewhat normalcy or at least to lower the risk of the spread. And I think that, um, uh, again, the El Centro is here to provide uh, whatever we can uh, directly to the Latino community. We have been disseminating a lot of information and hopefully the information that we are distributing is, is not misinformation because we rely on CDC and we rely on the local health department to give us the information that they want us to disseminate. Uh, with that, uh, I would also urge everybody to wear a mask in public as your uh, new uh, mandate says, and um, we will certainly push that out in our community. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, providing this information. 
Thank you so much for everything you do for our community, Romeo, and for joining us. And as I mentioned earlier, our business community um, has been carefully following um, the impacts of the pandemic and working to keep employees and businesses and our local economy safe and uh, recovering. And today we have our president of the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce, Wendy Birdsall, joining us uh, by Zoom. Wendy, over to you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. The Lincoln Chamber of Commerce wholeheartedly supports this measure. And as the mayor said, this is really in the best interest of both public health and economic recovery. It's how we get businesses open and we, get, we keep uh, employer, employees and customers safe. And it's a matter of common sense, not ideology. Uh, my hope is that we can all unite behind this effort and let's make Lincoln a model for the rest of the nation in how we exercise both personal and social responsibility. Let's all protect ourselves and those around us. We encourage businesses to rally behind this measure. And for those still struggling to gain access to PPE like masks, we encourage you to check out the website lnkppe.com. This was a website that was a joint effort of the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce and the City of Lincoln. And it provides a list of local suppliers of PPE. And uh, by using this site, you can both mask up and you can support local businesses. I also know there were a number of local business leaders who are supporting this that were unable to join us this afternoon, but I believe they've submitted comments. Again, thank you, Mayor, for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done to help support our local economy, our local businesses, and the distribution of PPE that can both keep us safe and help advance our local economy. And next, I'd like to invite Jada Jackson, a small business owner, up to speak about her experience and to share a message with the public. Hello, my name is Jada Jackson and I am a 21 year old small business owner, 2019 University of Nebraska at Omaha graduate and a Lincoln native. In these transformative and impactful times, it is crucial that we, the young people of today, do our part in keeping our community safe and healthy for tomorrow. As COVID-19 has redefined what our world looks like, all those who are able can help slow the spread with such a simple action that has a groundbreaking impact, a mask or facial covering over the mouth and nose. Although we don't know what the upcoming days, weeks, or months will bring, we do know that we can help our small business owners like myself and so many others further their dreams and thrive in the Lincoln community. Not just for our businesses, but for the safety of our loved, one, loved ones we see during the holidays and grandma and grandpa that we visit on the weekends. To my generation, it is up to us. We are the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jada. And thank you to all of our guests today who came to help share the message that this is our moment, Lincoln. Let's mask up, save lives, speed up our economic recovery, and set an example for our children, our future. This won't last forever. In fact, it will all be over sooner if we do this together now. With that, I'd like to open things up for questions from the media. Mayor Riley Johnson with the Journal Star. Hi, Riley. Could you talk about um, any discussions you had uh, with the governor prior to your um, decision to go forward with this policy, um, whether you expect a court challenge and sort of the, um, your view of the legality of the city um, doing this, though the state um, uh, said, uh, or the governor said he, he wouldn't, didn't want to pursue this. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the question. You know, um, as I have mentioned in my remarks, we have worked uh, closely with the governor's office throughout this process. We are, we are grateful for the leadership from the state. We've been working and talking to each other on a regular basis because we know how important that is to protecting the health and safety, not just of people in Lincoln, Lancaster County, but of course all across Nebraska. And um, throughout that process, we have um, had small distinctions between the rules and recommendations in our DHMs, and we've been candid and collegial and agreed to disagree at times. Uh, I know that the governor supports and has emphasized the importance of individuals wearing masks when they visit the store. He said those very words at his press conference uh, this morning, and I, I believe that this small variance in our DHM is similar to other differences that we've had in, in them throughout the pandemic. Um, and. I you know, would call upon our uh, legal team to discuss any other 
analysis of our ability to implement this health measure in Lincoln and Lancaster County. Good afternoon, Riley. Uh, I think the mayor has expressed it very well. Uh, we have done a legal analysis, and we feel comfortable that we can proceed the, as a city the way we have. But throughout this crisis, it's been a matter of the, the city, the cities really, and the state working together as partners. We don't see this step as, as creating an adversarial uh, position at all. Uh, and, and just as the city has cooperated and partnered with the uh, state, in addressing the crisis as best we can. We see this effort not as something where we're mandating and forcing people to do something that they don't want to, but something where we're cooperating with the citizens of the community. And I, you know, when we look at all the directed health measures we've had to date, these have been things what we've asked the community to do. We've enforced those, but that way that enforcement has taken place is we've gone out and worked with folks and we've educated them. And we've been in this situation for several months now. I think we've issued one citation to enforce these mandates. That's because the community has worked together to, to move us forward rather than requiring any sort of, of punitive effort. And so I think we're gonna see the same thing with the state of Nebraska, where the, the cooperative situation is gonna continue. I don't think we're gonna be in a situation like they are in Georgia where we're gonna be going to court. Does that answer your question, Riley? Yes, and on um, the measure of enforcement, could you uh, talk about what a violation of um, the mask mandate would, um, you said it would probably be education first, but um, would police be enforcing this? Would the health department, would people be subject to arrest? I don't anticipate a situation where anyone would be subject to arrest. When you look at the mandate, it's a matter of when you're going into an indoor space that's open to the public, for example, a store. And what we would be looking those businesses to do is to inform their customers, if you're coming in the store, you need to wear a mask. Not because that's a store policy, although many of our stores do have that policy, but because of the mandate. And so they're going to be asking their customers to do so and telling the customers you can't come in without a mask. If a customer insists on coming in without a mask, I, you know, the the business owner could ask LPD to come in because they'd be trespassing at that point. If a, if a store owner is inviting people to come in without a mask, then they would be the ones that would be in violation of the mandate because it's the owner, the, the person operating the business that's required to make sure that everyone in their premises that's unable to maintain social distances is wearing a mask. Now, the enforcement would be through the health department as it has been throughout. Uh, and, and the first step that the health department is going to do, as they have on numerous occasions, is go out and work with the business owner and talk to them about what they can do to enforce the mandate. We have a question. Uh, does this apply to both Lincoln and Lancaster County? Yes, it does. The mandates come from the health director. The department is Lincoln, Lancaster County, so it applies countywide. I have a question for Scott. Riley at the Journal Star with a question for the mayor. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry, Riley, I got the 20th before you should get it. Um, from Mark at KLIN. Uh, you mentioned hospital capacity is a factor health officials are tracking. What is the current availability of ICU beds, PPEs, and ventilators since there is a current patient shortage? Sure. So uh, on ventilators, 89% uh, of ventilators are actually available. ICU beds were uh, over 40-some uh, percent of the ICU beds are actually still available right now. And as far as PPE, uh, the health department works with the state and distributes PPE in the community to hospitals, nursing homes, law enforcement, and our current capacity for PPE is adequate. Uh, one of those measures that we've taken is especially with our uh, N95 masks, which are one of the critical supplies for healthcare providers. And we actually have an ongoing ultraviolet uh, 
light disinfection program for those masks to ensure that they're enough for our hospital providers. Riley, you said you had a question? Hi there. Um, as you stated um, in your announcement, there's a, a number of exceptions. Um, can you talk about um, why, if there is so many exceptions, um, you, you know, this policy is, is still important for, for the community and what, what instances you're hoping um, to solve uh, or address with the, with the, the directive? Well, the exceptions are pretty granular, and they're meant to recognize um, common sense instances where, you know, there maybe is a health condition that prevents the wearing of a mask or a temporary service that is being provided or someone whose job makes it difficult to wear a mask. I mean, but generally speaking, the goal is to get as much compliance as possible with the wearing of face masks in order to stop and slow the, prevent the, the spread of the virus. We have increasing evidence, you know, that that mask mandates help do that. Um, a recent Goldman Sachs study showed that a statewide mask mandated um, was increased the percentage of people who always wear masks by nearly 40 percent. And while we do have so many people in Lincoln and Lancaster County who are putting on masks because they know that that's a great way to take care of each other, to protect each other from this disease. Um, we also know that young people aren't necessarily hearing the message, and we will continue to work diligently across our community to reach young people who, of course, feel more invincible and who are less likely to even recognize that they have symptoms, to be asymptomatic carriers of this virus. We're going to continue to reach, as, reach out to them in um, really targeted ways because so much depends on the choices that they make. Um, while they may not be headed to the hospital or put on a ventilator, they might inadvertently or unintentionally bring the disease home to a grandparent or a vulnerable um, relative who does end up in the hospital, and we d no one wants that. And so this requirement of wearing masks is likely to get more attention across our community, likely to reach some whom we have yet to be able to reach. That is our goal, um, and it won't last forever. This won't last forever. But with Students returning to the University of Nebraska and other uh, educational institutions with our public schools wanting to open up. It's really important that we get on top of this now, and there's a, there's a fierce urgency to this right now, and we believe this is the best step that we can take as we work to develop those targeted strategies that will take more time to reach our young people. Other questions? Mayor, this is Bill with 1011. Obviously, you know, zero is the ideal goal for, for cases of COVID-19 in the community. But is there a, is there a daily rate um, that we could hit where you would envision, okay, Lincoln's doing much better right now? I don't have, I don't a, specific have a specific number to give you in this moment, Bill, but what we want to see is a reversal of these trends. Our trends right now are moving upward to where they were uh, when we were first seeing a surge in the virus in Lincoln. And there's a real difference between where we were at that first kind of spike in cases and where we are today. Um, one of the differences is good. Back then, we weren't as prepared in terms of PPE or access to testing and other protective measures that are in place now. So there's a good aspect of where we are now versus where we are then. But maybe the more troubling difference between then and now is that back then, the majority of our cases were emerging in clusters in known locations, which made it easier to manage and get on top of the virus, to control the spread by doing effective contact tracing. Now that we're seeing more communities spread, we're seeing young people go to bars. They're around dozens or hundreds of people who they don't know, who they don't consider colleagues or people who are familiar to them. And that's an aspect that makes contact tracing much more difficult and gives the virus a chance to spread more widely. So by wearing masks, we think we can help uh, mitigate that new reality and get this virus under control and move our numbers in a more positive direction. What's your response to the crowd that says, you know, the whole goal was to flatten the curve and keep hospitalizations level, levels healthy. 
which looking at ICU beds and ventilators right now, they are healthy. There's, there's a lot of people, I think, out there that feel that goal uh, has been achieved. Well, all along here in Lincoln and Lancaster County, we have articulated the goals not only of preventing um, overburdening our hospitals and overwhelming the people who put their lives on the line to deliver essential medical care to our community. We've also been looking to uh, prevent unnecessary illness and death and suffering and to protect the most vulnerable among us. Um, we are trying to achieve both of those goals as we navigate this pandemic. We have a question for law. Uh, what's the basis of the Lincoln Lancaster Health Department's authority to do this? We'll bring Jeff Kirkpatrick back up. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Is of the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department's authority to do this? That's part of our inherent, uh, the health department's inherent authority uh, as a local health department to take whatever uh, efforts it needs to during a pandemic, or actually we have the same authority to fight any sort of contagious disease. The health department has a long history of fighting contagious diseases by whatever methods necessary, going back to the days when they were fighting polio and tuberculosis, to current days when, when we don't have a pandemic going on, we've got a lot of efforts focused on fighting foodborne diseases or sexually transmitted diseases. That's part of the mission of the health department. Miley Johnson, General Starr, with a question for either Scott or um, Director Lopez. Um, has the health department needed to shut down any bars um, for lack of compliance with the DHM rules to date? No, we haven't, Riley. Uh, we've been working very closely with bars, and uh, Scott can talk a little bit about I believe we shared with you the letter that was hand delivered to all of the bars um, uh, between Tuesday and Wednesday this week. And so um, I'll, let, I'll let Scott finish that. Sure. Um, we have not had to shut anyone down, Riley. We have issued some official notices um, and we have followed through to ensure that folks are in compliance. Uh, we take it very seriously that this is important in our community, but we also try to work with our businesses. And often uh, it's just some confusion about how the directed health measure applies to their business or uh, something that they're not sure about compared to uh, how they apply it within their uh, existing staffing or things like that. So we've been able to work through those without having to go down a closure path at this point. Thank you. I have a I do want to say, though, we will continue to work with them. Um, and when we have provided some information of corrective action that needs to take place, we are extremely serious um, about the measures and the bars following the directed health measures. That's just a clear expectation. And if that is not done, and education is provided, and there continue to be issues, we will look at closure. Thank you. Another DHM question for either of you two. Um, there seems to be some discrepancy about whether or not the, the current DHM that's in place or the rules therein would allow for school to be held. Um, what What is the, uh, there was some dis discussion of this between the um, Lincoln Education Association and LPS about whether the current DHM rules apply, uh, uh, applied to school would allow um, for teaching of students in classrooms. And what, what, what does the DHM currently allow as, as far as school goes? I, Riley, I, there is nothing in the current DHM and we can ask um, Jeff Kirkpatrick uh, for 
absolute clarification, but there's nothing in the current DHM that would prohibit schools from opening. Pat, I do have a question, if you don't mind, real quick. You know, if I could respond quickly oh, to yep. the education. Yep. Pardon me for taking so long to come up here. Um, if the question is regarding to the, the limit on gatherings, uh, those gatherings, as we spelled out in earlier DHMs, were on a room-by-room -room basis. And so when you were looking at whether it was a preschool or a, a, a meeting or a classroom, and those have shifted over time, but providing that an educational institution followed those limits as far as gatherings, I don't know that there was anything in prior DHMs that would have applied to an educational setting to limit uh, any sort of school activity, if that helps. So essentially to clarify, the school could be held, although it would need to have more, it would need to follow social distancing between um, the students and teachers. Distancing, but particularly the number of people in a in a room, because the, the limitation was on the number of people in a room. For example, we had a period of time when we were limiting city council meetings to only having 10 people in the chambers. So that was the kind of limitation we had as the DHMs have relaxed, the number of people in a room has increased over time. And Riley, we've worked with each school um, district uh, specifically about how to best, most safely conduct school. Any other questions from the media? I just have a quick one for anybody with the health department, just because there seems to be some theories going around and I want some clarification. If a positive case has multiple positive tests, that is still considered one case, correct? Unless somebody test positive, then test negative, gets better, and then test positive again, that would be a separate case. No, it is one case. And thank you for asking that, Bill. We, I have recently heard um, that that information was going around and we were gonna uh, a plan to put something on our website for clarification. The, er, it doesn't matter how many times there is a test, it is one case per person. It's not the number of tests that are done. Any other questions today? If not, thank you. Thank you to all of our guests who have joined us. Thank you to our community for taking this so seriously. We appreciate that you'll be wearing masks to help protect our, yourself, your loved ones, your neighbors, and our community, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.